Hi, my name's Andy and I'm working through the circuit diagram for this GEC BC5645 radio. In this segment I want to talk about the ratio detector. I'm temporarily skipping over the IF section but I will come back to that. Um, it's a function of the ratio detector to strip off the audio signal that's transmitted along with the carrier wave and it also uh, provides the negative voltage for the automatic volume control, the AVC line. And um, So far we've covered these components and this is the part of the circuit that I want to talk about today. In order to show you how this uh, ratio detector works, it, it's really quite tricky in the radio. So what I've done is I've made a little demonstration uh, circuit that I hope will help us in working through. This is the part of the circuit that I'd like to talk about today, the ratio detector. These are the actual components in the radio and uh, here are the two diodes. The uh, inductor is in uh, uh, a case that's on the other side of the chassis uh, but uh, through through there and then there's various resistors. Uh, the electrolytic capacitor is this device here which you see red, yellow and black. That's the electrolytic capacitor and I'll just show you the, uh, the, the can the other side uh, this is the can for the uh, ratio detector um, coils and uh, it shares that space with the uh, second IF transformer for the AM section, for the uh, amplitude modulated section. So these are the components in the radio and then uh, just across here these are the components that I've used to make up a, uh, a little ratio detector. So I've wound a coil and uh, there's a capacitor there uh, which um, I'll take you through the various components on a circuit diagram and the two diodes there. This is the circuit diagram as shown in the data sheet. C33 and L16 form a tuned tank circuit that is tuned to the center frequency of the FM carrier wave. The secondary of the transformer, L18, is also part of a tuned circuit with C34. Again, these are tuned to the center frequency of the carrier wave. The audio signal is taken from the center of L18 via another winding and that signal passes through uh, the resistor R17 that has one end of it tapped to ground via C36. The top and bottom of L18 uh, feeds a diode and you'll notice that those diodes are in a position such that one is pointing forwards and the other one pointing backwards um, but in actual fact electrically they are both forward biased and the ends of those diodes are connected to C14 that's the electrolytic capacitor that I showed you in the circuit and um, just note that the top of C40 is positive and that is the end that is grounded. To work at optimum performance the two diodes need to be perfectly matched and as uh, that's often not the case the uh, resistors R21 and R22 uh, that shunt the diodes help to match the diodes so that they both have similar forward characteristics. As the carrier wave is introduced into the 
primary of the transformer as, a, as an AC signal so the uh, signal is seen on the secondary side and the, it is rectified by the diodes and the capacitor is charged to some DC level. Uh, the resistor R24 determines the response rate so is it's charged or discharged so if the signal level increases or decreases R24 will uh, help to uh, shape that response rate. The level of charge across C40 is largely independent of frequency change. It is the amplitude of the frequency that it sees. The voltage developed across C40 is taken off the uh, negative end of the capacitor and that goes off to provide the negative drive voltage for the automatic volume control line, the AVC line. To try and demonstrate this circuit in the radio is very tricky so I've put together a little uh, demonstration unit which I hope uh, will be helpful. Uh, I've simplified the circuit it operates in exactly the same way, it's, it's just that I've got rid of some of the parts that we don't need. I'm using the signal generator to represent the carrier wave and I've tuned the tank circuit to um, 400 kilohertz. And so that's just peaking, I'm right at the end of the travel, but that's peaking now. And the oscilloscope is connected to points uh, A for the ground and then B and C for channels 1 and 2 that you're seeing here. Uh, the digital meter is connected across the electrolytic capacitor um, on the positive and negative. So we have a, a carrier wave that's, uh, that's coming in and if I uh, say that the station has become weak at the moment we've got minus 6.39 volts there. Uh, if the station becomes weak there so the, the voltage has reduced, it's, it's gone down to 0.27 so there is less negative feedback so the early stages of the amplifier will draw, drive harder in order to make this signal large again and if I increase that signal there so now we've got a let's say we've got a, a very large station we're driving down the road uh, not with this radio <laughs> but uh, we're driving down the road we've got closer to the station or there's a bit of atmospheric fading as uh, has gone away and the, the, the signals increased the negative voltage has increased to uh, 7.79 volts and that effectively uh, drives down the input stages and it, it will try and maintain a constant level no it will maintain a, a constant level so long as it's got sufficient capability within the control loop so that's the automatic volume control, the AVC. Um, that's the, the easy part to understand. As usual my explanation has overrun the time I'd allowed myself and I will discuss how the ratio detector decodes the audio frequency in the next video. That'll be part 10. I hope you found this information interesting and hopefully helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.